Hello and welcome everyone to Let's Play Tomb Raider 4 The Last Revelation. Zilg is 115 speaking and let me welcome you to a very familiar looking area, the Great Hippostal Hall. Now this is the second time you should find yourself in this level coming from the Temple of Karnak. And the only two key items in your inventory as of now should be the Amulet of Horus, the Hippostal Kill, oh sorry, three items and the Sun Goddess. Unless you left her on the pedestal, which I don't actually think is possible because Lara first picks up the Sun Goddess, then the Hippostal key, if I remember correctly. So, as the name suggests, this is the place to be with the key, and we are finally gonna open the hall itself. Uh, during our first foray into this level, we were just in an antechamber leading into it, well, what was at the time, locked door behind a crawl space. Now, be on your guard and keep that shotgun handy, because we are, oh, facing a new enemy. Well, that was really underwhelming. I was about to say how tough these guys can be, but you wouldn't believe me after this display of incompetency. <laughs> At least he dropped Uzi Clip. So, this is a new kind of enemy, and they can be a lot of fun or a lot of frustration, depending on... Whoa! How you... Whoa! Well, pretty much made a hole into Lara's abdomen. Well, interesting. The guy before took four shotgun shots. That's the average that I'm used to. This guy took three shotgun shots and he already fell down dead. This has actually never happened to me as long as I remember, not that I'm playing the game recently or that I play on, on my uh, PS Vita, so it seems like every one of those pellets managed to hit and none of them scattered, which is in enormously rare. It can usually take four up to five shotgun shots. Well, anyway, um, it's really interesting because I was thinking whether shotgun is my recommended weapon on these guys or whether we should use our Uzis and you know what? For some of these we'll use shotgun, for others Uzis. And I'll explain why in a little Whoa, 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 little while. If there's two of them at the same time I recommend Uzis but we managed to <laughs> kill one just before the other joined the party. Yeah, and you can pretty much cheese them like this. You can just uh, unholster your weapon, then draw it again, and they will unsheath their blade to stop deflecting your bullets. But that feels kind of cheap, so I like to jump around or even directly tackle them to see if that will make them change their stance. Plus, I don't like cheese, and cheesing in general, but uh, taste of cheese, not a big fan. <laughs> okay, so don't worry, you will get, those, uh, get the sweet sound of Uzis soon enough, the same one as in Tomb Raider 3. Now, uh, if, if you remember the first time we were here during our first visit, this is where the cutscene triggered where Von Croy and his assassins entered. Well, the cutscene only shown the blue variety that we are used to, and that we faced off in the Temple of Karnak just a short while ago. These guys are a different breed. Uh, they also have ranged weapons, but they start with their blades. The blue assassins, or white, or whatever color they're supposed to be, they start with their ranged weapons, but sometimes switch to their uh, short blades, so it's a bit different. But yeah, these guys are able to deflect bullets. Even a shotgun blast, I don't know how they do that. Now, here we are again at this door that I talked to you about. Now, I'm kind of pondering whether I should make a save here or not, but you know what? No, I I'm totally gonna risk it just to keep the adrenaline going because behind this door is uh, the Great Hippostal Hall itself. It's beautiful, it's absolutely stunning and gorgeous, one of the most memorable areas. And at the same time, it's also one of the places where due to no fault of your own, you can permanently lose the chance to get two items. So, and you can actually also not trigger three assassins to spawn, because you will not step on one very specific tile. It's just crazy stuff. By now, I know what's going on, so I'm gonna demonstrate. now. If you have played or watched someone play the Tomb Raider 3, uh, you remember the little monkeys in the India jungle, how they used to steal your goodies, your small health packs, OZ clips? Well, one of these assassins we just faced is gonna get his hands on a small health pack. And even if you kill him afterwards, he's not gonna drop it. Just like that. So do not draw your weapons. If you're interested in all the items as a completionist or someone who desperately needs a health pack, uh, make sure to get on this block over here and pick it up quickly because the assassin on the stone block over there would have stolen it. Oh, not good, not good, not good at all. Oh, I'm losing track of who's Lara aiming on. Okay, both of them down. Now please... Oh, thank goodness gracious. One of these assassins, the first one we kill, is supposed to drop Uzis. So you will get your sweet bullets or the weapon if you didn't get it before. However, 
Based on where exactly his corpse will drop, sometimes the Uzis can end up on the tile where this column is, or even this one, which means they will become unobtainable. So pretty much the same assassin, uh, not the same, <laughs> the same assassin can steal your small health pack over here, and also uh, the only thing he drops might become unobtainable. It's very stressful, but I am so happy we managed to overcome this hurdle, so keep that in mind if you are in it for all the goodies. Now, the second problem I mentioned about certain enemies not spawning unless you uh, pretty much step on a very particular tile, uh, that is still a problem, however, if you know which tiles you have to step on, you can always sort of summon them later on, and I'm gonna demonstrate exactly what I mean, okay? So, uh, the Great Hypostal Hall actually is three Great Hypostal Halls, all connected via n small dark arty chambers like these. Yeah, we have one in the middle, there is uh, rubble blocking the one on the right over here, so we are not getting through to there, and there is also one on the left. Now, I'm gonna show you something. If we enter the second hall via the anti chamber on the left, we, uh, we will find the second hall devoid of enemies. Nothing. Complete and utter silence, nothing much going on other than the remarkable architecture, so you can just safely pick up your shotgun shells and be on your way into the third hall, right? Well, it's never that simple. This is where an assassin is supposed to be, but he's not. And you know why? Well, because you did not step on this particular tile. <laughs> and now that you have, behind this block, there he is. Just like that. He's not able to hit us, but Lara is wasting those shotgun shots. I don't like that. And if we go one step closer, will he let go? No. Well, you know, fine. We can just tackle them like this. And that's it. Problem taken care of. But I think we pretty much wasted two shotgun shells, which, honestly... Considering the crazy quantity of that ammunition, I don't mind. 132, that is so much. And 54 wide shot is also not bad. But again, I'm, I'm going to play around with wide shot on some particular enemies later on in the game. Now, uh, now that we are in the second hall, we also need to get into the third one. And again, we have a choice of three antechambers to enter with. Left one, uh, the middle one over here and then the right one. Now, the first right antechamber was completely blocked off, this one only partially so, and if you try and enter it, you will at least find a large health pack, although no passage through to the third great hall, right? So you can pretty much return back. And by the way, our objective right now is to find a switch because we want to get to the very top of this middle hall to be able to shoot the boulder so that it falls down here and opens up a path to a sun disk. Now, uh, in order to get to the top floor, we need to do a lot of monkey swinging. Unfortunately, we cannot really monkey swing across due to this tile over here. We need to lift that square up using a switch, and the switch is in the third chamber. Now. I'm gonna repeat what we did before. I'm gonna use the left antechamber to enter the third hall. And you will again see that we find ourselves in a rather empty, albeit beautiful hall, right? So we can again safely get the goodies, in this case, a box of flares. And over here is where an assassin should have spawned, but he didn't because we did not step on this tile. And now, <laughs> there he is, right? It took me ages to figure out what exactly was causing these guys to spawn or not to spawn. My god, you managed to block one of those shots. Right? But once I figured it out, I was really just scratching my head. Why did the developers think it's a good idea? Maybe the engine is not capable of tr having different spawning points for the same enemy and they didn't want you to be able to spawn even more assassins by walking on that tile and maybe even through the left antechamber. I don't know what the idea was. Or maybe they were just really rushing it. I mean, they managed to release this game with many improvements, a ton of levels and variety in one year, which I still don't know how it was possible. Okay, now, that's not the end of our um, tricky assassin spawns. Now, there's the switch I mentioned. Again, just another excuse to use my binox. There it is, in all its beauty. So we are gonna have to do some monkey swinging. Now, 
where do we start monkey swinging? So the idea is that you monkey swing across all three holes all the way to this switch over here, right? No, I have a much better idea. I want to save your time. Monkey swinging can be fun for a short while, but not for that long. Uh, we are going to be making use of a couple of these um, relatively tall blocks because they will enable us to get to a couple of shortcuts, right? So let's just jump from here to over here. And for some reason, this part of the ceiling is monkey swingable. So this is the longest stretch of monkey swinging we have to do just across the entirety of the third hall. But bear with me. Now, the idea is you would either enter from here, the middle antechamber, or the one at the far right. Uh, only the one at the far right will cause yet another assassin to spawn. How you're supposed to know this, I truly have no idea. And I was a bit frustrated and desperate because I was looking for walkthroughs online and none of them mentioned this, strangely enough. It seems like everyone monkey swung, swung, swang their way across from the right antechamber. They all said that by the time you activate this enormously satisfying switch, watch the cutscene and turn around, an assassin will come monkey swinging across at you. Well, I see no assassin, I'm not sure about you. You actually have to touch the tile over there, so the right antechamber, otherwise the assassin will not spawn. It's just, oh man. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna touch it with Lara's lovely feet, then we're gonna get down and shoot the guy down from the ceiling, which is actually kind of hilarious. We can... I'm pretty sure we can use our pistols for that. I think a lot of Uzi bullets would be wasted, not just because we don't need to, but also because of their inaccuracy. And now, there he is, see? <laughs> okay, so you really just have to touch that specific dial. And now we get to shoot him off the ceiling, which is really hilarious. Kind sir. Oh, he's cheating. He's monkey swinging on ceiling that is not monkey swingable. What the hell? That's not fair. Are they using some sticky spider gloves or something? And he just falls. It's probably even funnier if he somehow manages to fall down on top of Lara and not break her neck. <laughs> but there it is. That's pretty much it. And if I'm not mistaken, there is only one more assassin to go, but this guy at least cannot be missed to my awareness, so that's fine. And yeah, we could have been starting to monkey swing from across the switch all the way over here, but I just prefer to show you how else you can attach yourself to the ceiling, or even from the first hole. No, sir. There are much more efficient ways to do this. Just jump over here. And by the way, we are nearing the boulder. It's just we can't really shoot it down from here, unfortunately. And there we go. Just go forward. And even though the tile doesn't really look like it, it is monkey swingable. I Don't ask me how. Now, however, I mentioned there is only one more assassin that w his spawn is guaranteed if you go over here. Yeah, mind the sound cue. But we don't want to just kill him and make him drop off the ceiling into the floor. <gasps> I am such an idiot. You know what? Okay, let's do just that. You know what? No, I, I have a better idea. There is something I really wanted to show you. I thought the sprint key would be enough to hold Lara's progression. There is a much better way. The idea I had was to just take chip away some of his health. <laughs> hey there, neighbor. <laughs> This is great! <laughs> okay, the idea was just to chip away some of his health and kill him once he lands onto the ledge over here. <laughs> this is great! Imagine all the aggressive stares they have to share with each other. Now, he will draw his weapon and start deflecting bullets. I want to chip away some of his health, not all of it with pistols. I'm not sure if that was enough. Unholster, redraw, do that again. Yeah, and now he's deflecting them, just like that. But what I want to do now is just to draw a shotgun and allow him to get a bit closer. Now, don't be shy, come on, come on. Because I don't want his corpse... There we go, to fall down. Ah, perfect, completely. Perfect, ignoring the fact we dropped down. <laughs> anyway, it was worth it just to see the monkey swinging back. This guy drops another box of shotgun shells. So, you know, if you were to shoot him down as you are here, you would have to go down and up again, which is very ironic because that's exactly what I wanted to avoid, but ended up doing it anyway. Oh, well, there you go. Unpredictable stuff. Okay, and up we go. This is the only way to get completely up, as far as I'm aware, hence the switch was a necessity. And I'll be very careful because a camera angle will lock you here, so maneuvering Lara with the tank controls might be a bit tricky if it's not the camera angle you're used to. 
Now let me show you something really funny. You're supposed to know you're supposed to shoot this boulder even with pistols just to make it fall down make a hole in the floor right I already explained this before uh, it can help to crouch I don't think it's necessary but let me just tilt the camera here and show you exactly what happens how the developers wanted to treat us <laughs> so the floor crumbled before the boulder even touched it and there was already another boulder lying in wait pretending it's the same one and the original one just up and disappeared there's something cute about using this kind of um, uh, illusion, you know? <laughs> Almost like movie making, in a way. Uh, it's, it's kind of cute. Okay, and down into the hole we go. And that's where we continue. So, please, let's go to the right first. Because here we can get our hands on some Uzi clips. They are barely noticeable unless you light a flare, which is what I did, because I'm so smart. Okay, and the back crawling distance is short enough for us to not really have to turn Lara around really slowly, so... Wow, that was some precision jumping. I want to say I intended it that way. I totally did not, but I'm glad it happened nevertheless. And there we are, the, uh, well, another obelisk room. This one is made out of glass, or, well, its tip is. You can actually climb up, but then the game will realize your position is invalid and will push you to the nearest possible one. It's kind of basically the same basis like corner glitching works in a way, you know? Now, we need to shatter that glass and... <laughs> You know, the game pretended how realistic it is, you can't just shoot it. No, sir. Whatever it is, it needs light to shatter it. I don't know... I really don't know what kind of light is shattered by glass. Now, in order to do it, we need to trigger the light beam mechanism. No. But Lara refuses to, and you know why? Because there are three chambers, each with its own obelisk, and they are all tilted in the wrong way. We basically need to turn obelisk uh, in each of these rooms to the correct positioning so that Lara will not refuse to activate the mechanism. Which is a shame, I would like to know what would happen if we were to do it anyway, but uh, she, she, I guess, you know, with her experience and knowledge, she really knows her stuff. I'd like to think at least. But the reason I'm going into these chambers is not to trigger the turning mechanism, no, it's not done from here. If you take a careful look up, you will see a grate and another room above it. We will actually be controlling and rotating these things from top. But the reason I'm here for now is just to get our hands on some goodies, which are... Uh, I don't like getting these goodies because each of them needs the long climb. You know, it's a bit annoying to be honest, but there you have it. Wow, that was, again, some really well done precision jumping, even though we took damage. Totally worth it. And in this chamber over here, to the right from where we entered, uh, we will just get our hands on a pair of Uzi clips, right? And we can also go to the left one as we entered, so opposite of where we are right now, but, um, well, there is there is no pickup. And Lara got her flare stuck in her hand. Will she drop it if I do this? She didn't drop it, it just disappeared. Huh, okay. Fair enough. Now, how do we get up, you might ask? Uh, there was another room we ignored on our way here. That's how we are gonna get up. And mine the tile over here. This is the same tile we used in the Great Hippostal Hall. I mean, we are still in the same level, but the actual hall. To monkey swing across. Uh, it looks the same, and it pretty much implies that it's gonna open or close at some point. So, in our case, it's gonna open, but only once we get our hands on what's inside the obelisk tip. That's the sun disk belonging to the sun goddess, by the way. And there it is. And we have to align Lara carefully for her to grab this, which I managed to do with such finesse, it almost seemed like I'm not trying. Yeah, the ladder ends short, but it is still climbable, don't you worry. And there we are. And there's something I thoroughly enjoy about this puzzle. Now, if you remember, to our left is where the obelisk is, so to our left is where this obelisk needs to point. And it's very easy to sort of figure out where it points because the handle on this turnstile is where the obelisk is pointing as well, right? Now, if you just press the action key, depending on which direction you do that from, see, I just pressed it, I'm doing nothing more right now, Lara will turn it by 90 degrees. Uh, it's very similar to pushing objects. If you just press forward an action key, long enough for Lara to start the animation, she will push it forward by one square. You don't actually have to hold forward here, just the action key is enough. But if you were to hold it, for example, and now we need to turn it by 180 degrees, so I'm going to hold it. 
and I'm gonna release it only once Lara starts the next turning animation. There, I released it now, so now we turn it by 180. So it's just very simple like that. And we are moving uh, at the very top, uh, around the circuit above these three obelisks. And I think here we again just need to make one turn. There we go. The tricky thing is that you don't really know if you position them correctly or not uh, until you are down there again and you would have to return and realign them again, which can be a bit annoying. There is also nothing strictly suggesting that you have to align them, but personally, to me, it just comes naturally. Like, this is the first thing that would occur to me, really. I remember being proud I figured out you need to shoot the boulder in the Great Hippostal Hall as well as a kid. I mean, I just, when I don't know what's going on, I like to shoot at things, so that was really one of my first instincts, and it turned out to be correct. <laughs> ah, shame we can break this glass like the many windows in Tomb Raider 2. No, but, ah, watch this, something cool is gonna happen. So the obelisks are now being aligned. Oh, Lara's climbing! <laughs> well, she tried just before it blew up. I love cutscenes where you can control Lara. It's so much fun. Uh, I was hoping we could get the sun disk in time for the camera to also show you the trapdoor over here opening. We just missed it because of that one fall. I was actually here too early, so it pushed Lara out. Uh, that, that was just too funny. Okay. But again, cutscenes where I can control Lara, I'm gonna make the most out of them. They're hilarious. Okay. Maybe let's not make another step because that will trigger the level end. So now let me just show you what is it we got our hands on. The Sun Disk, Sun Goddess, and we have the combined prompt, but I'm totally not gonna do that. It just doesn't seem appropriate. I'm gonna do it in the next level, which will be a second visit into the Sacred Lake, right? So. Uh, let's just look at the statistics screen here. So the Great Hippostal Hall. We have found the 13 items that were available during our second visit. We managed to get our hands on the small health pack that was not stolen and the Uzis that did not get stuck on a tile with one of the columns. So I'm very happy about that. We also managed to kill all 10 assassins. I'm probably going to refer to them as red assassins as opposed to the blue ones. And we even managed to find all the different trigger points for those tricky ones that refuse to spawn. So, again, great stuff. And we have found no secrets. Even during our first visit, there are basically no secrets to be had in the Great Hippostal Hall other than the Sun Disk itself. So, with that, let me celebrate by making a save here. Huh, our 13th one, what a lucky number. And I'll see you guys next time in the Sacred Lake.